Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joel Brand. We're just talking about advertising on Twitch and how yeah. it jumps on everything. And I'm like, you know what? I'm cool though. If you're a sub or if you got Twitch Turbo, don't worry about it. You'll get it ads on our channel. But it's like, you it's a lose-lose situation. Pre-roll ads or in-stream ads? Pick your poison. Quite unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Twitch Turbo is the best investment. I don't get any money for saying that, but I watch a lot of live streams. Great mm -hmm. thing to have. Big show for you this week. Stick around. We're going to be talking about Winbox, KDE, laptops, AMD in the mid-range, and making friends with yeah. artificial pie. Should be interesting. But up first, I've talked about it before, and I'm going to talk about it again. This thing showed up. Talked about it on Saturday just a little bit. That's the Razda X4. Yeah. The nice little bit of unobtainium that you cannot get your hands on. But I got one. Why? Because I thieved my way into it. I'm like, hey, guys, could you send me a review unit? And they're like, sure. So there we go. I wish I had a more involved story than that. I got it. Got to get some extra parts to go play around with it. If you haven't heard about it, it is a very interesting piece. Raspberry Pi sized x86 and 100 powered with 2.5 gigajoule Ethernet Yay. sticking <laughs> out of the back. NVMe drives all for 60 bucks. There's a reason they're out of stock. I'm going to be playing around. <laughs> <laughs> like crazy with that. Still doing a, another kind of uh, mid-sized project. When hopefully the hardware for that will come in tomorrow. Good times. But the reason I bring that up, I want you to go over to Interfacing Linux. If you have any questions, like what you would like to see done with that, because uh, let's see, Ayrton has already asked. I uh, got questions about it. Um, Westover has got some things like check out Wake on LAN. Dax even popped in. These are things like I will be able to answer in the video and during the written review, because if you haven't figured this out yet, after the video and the review and the write-up's done, showing up in the comment section going, hey, could you test this? The answer is always no, it's not gonna happen. That's never worked for anybody. I don't know why people try it. So yeah, I very much would appreciate your feedback. Give me those questions and I'll be sure to slide in anything extra that I can think about. You know, we're definitely gonna do some gaming, see if it runs OBS transcoding and uh, a bunch of other fun exciting things now you <laughs> to no shock and surprise have decided to return to disneyland yeah when, once again on saturday and i'm going with my nephew and uh, his partner chris and i'm looking forward to spending the day with them at at Disneyland, and as I do on a monthly, sometimes bi-monthly or tri-monthly basis, <laughs> or, or I'm sorry, every, sometimes uh, two or three times a month. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been working a lot, so I'm really looking forward to it. And I was supposed to go Monday or Tuesday to be with family, but during the heat wave, we kind of called it off because it was over 100 degrees Fahrenheit at Disneyland, and that's kind of a miserable experience. <laughs> Oh, you little critters can't handle that kind of heat, can you? No, no. Oh, we're <laughs> so, melting. Ah. <laughs> I've been fortunate. They live in a I'm very here. delicate biome yeah. in the Los Angeles area. It, if it gets a little too cold or a little too um, warm, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they gotta get. You gotta protect them. You gotta put them inside. I'm like, all right, you're safe. <laughs> and if it inside. rains, just run. They lose their <laughs> mind. I'm like, ah, it's melting. No, it's cool, man. I'm glad you guys yeah. were able to hang out and be able to get together and do all the fun stuff. So, yeah. Now, you might look back here in the rack. Not one, but two of these devices are from Latvia. They're Microtech. Microtech's oh, nice. really cool. Art Theron knows that I run these things, mm -hmm. and he hit me up in Discord, and he was like, Hey, Vin, I know you got the Microtech devices. And I'm like, I do, man. He's like, do you use Winbox? I'm like, maybe. He's like, well, <laughs> it now has a Linux version. That's right. Yay. Winbox 4 is finally here. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. It even has a dark mode. There's been a bit of an announcement. This is how you control it. This is the GUI for those of you who don't want to deal with the psychotic Cisco-esque, but not quite Cisco uh, command line interface to your Microtech. I got some uh, screenshots of it. This is the 4011 running in the studio right now, bringing you the data bits over the ether noodles. And previously, if we wanted to run this, we had to run this through wine. Like, but it ran fine under wine, no problem. Wine, wine box, boom, you're done. But this new version, completely native, it's using the QT. So 
that's neat, but it's also using up a lot of CPU resources. It's about 11 mm -hmm. times more um, resource intensive than just running Winbox 3 through Wine. There's been a lot of complaints. And I wrote about it in my little forum post when I was diagnosing this. I'm like, maybe they still got debugging enabled on these builds because it is very much beta and it will import your Winbox 3.0 settings. Like, okay, you got to keep in mind these, the MicroTik challenge, you get, you legitimately, you know, like back in the day when you got Arch installed, you know, you give yourself like a little badge. I'm like, I got Arch installed. Getting a MicroTik device up and running and like give yourself a little badge. You're like, I got one of these things up and running because they're typically used by ISPs. These are not really designed as home routers, but they're really fun, really great to play with. And um, Winbox 4.0 completely moves everything around. It gets rid of tabs. It has drop down menus. I absolutely hate them. Haven't got used to them yet. But these routers do run their own version of Linux. You can even run containers on them, which is interesting. And they give you ability to do anything that you want to do with your hardware. There's no artificial software limitations saying, well, you need to buy additional license in order. And I was like, nope, if your hardware supports it, go for it. That's why they're fun to hack around and play with until you try to set up your first VLAN. You're like, this is absolutely insane. You're like, yeah, it is a little bit. So if you can handle the learning curve, I suggest mm -hmm. you get out there and just pick one up. You can get them on the cheap end. Like this 4011 is like under $200 and it clobberates any of the alien space spider asus looking you know those moon routers and like get all the crap hanging off the sides of them so um yeah that's my recommendation and thanks again arthur for pointing that out man uh winbox is a it's a handy tool especially if you get a bunch of devices access points uh go play around with it there's my little plug it's a linux device and it runs the linux and hey because linux it is native but do keep in mind much heavier on the resource usage. Get out there and go play Very with nice. it, man. Pretty fun and exciting. <laughs> KDE Slimbook VI. Yeah. Man, when are we going to get the KDE Slimbook Emacs? <laughs> That's funny, man. That was good. So a new Linux-powered KDE Slimbook Ultra laptop is here. The KDE Slimbook version 6. <laughs> or the Vi. <laughs> and it is a huge upgrade from the previous model. This 16-inch uh, KDE Slimbook 6 includes an AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS 8-core CPU that goes up to 5.1 gigahertz, and it has an integrated neural processing unit for AI and LM and ML workloads. And it also has integrated AMD 780M 12 cores running at 2700 megahertz GPU, which performance is just above a GTX 1050 Ti from NVIDIA, but with a lower power draw. So pretty impressive, impressive on the GPU specs. And it has a 16 inch 2560 by 1600, 1610, 100% RGB running at 120 hertz and 400 nits display. Very nice display. And the base model actually has 16 gig gigabytes of RAM, and the highest model can go up to as high as 96 gigabytes of RAM, which is more than the previous version, which cut off at 64 gigabytes of RAM. And the awesome thing, it has unsoldered ram for easy ram upgrades there's uh, two ram slots and you can upgrade them <laughs> like you should on every lab be able to on every laptop and there are two ssd nvme pcie 4.0 slots for up to eight terabytes of storage and the kde slimbook 6 also has an 80 watt hour battery a four speaker sound system a 720p webcam and a beautiful space blue aluminum chassis. I always love to see something, you know, especially with these new mm -hmm. Ryzen 7s. Mm, yes. Nice to see integrated 780M graphics, 2560 yeah. by 1600 resolution, 120 hertz. Yeah. Eight terabytes mm -hmm. of storage, up to 96 gigabytes mm -hmm. of RAM, and a 720p webcam. Laptops, why you got to be like this? <laughs> Why you gotta do that, laptops? <laughs> 720p webcam. I know. They, they should all be minimally 1080, but 
<laughs> it should be 4K. This is 2024. <laughs> 720p webcam. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about AMD in the mid range. So, you know, we've all known that AMD has, you know, there's rumors, man. I've been talking about it on Linux Gamecast for a while. Like, mm-hmm. internet's been on about it. What have they been saying? They've been saying AMD is not going to make a, you know, Halo card, you know, the 4090 or the 5090 or 5080 competitor. They're just going to like, you know, just kind of make some average cards. And we've been like, yeah, we're fine, whatever. Like, yeah, no, nobody's mm-hmm. been kind of blown away about it. Well, we, we got some confirmation on that this week, yeah, didn't we, we did. Jill? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just yesterday, in fact. Yeah. So like Ven was saying, we've been hearing rumors for a long time that AMD is going to start focusing on mid-range and entry-level GPUs to compete with the likes of NVIDIA. And it actually, yes, was officially confirmed yesterday. And AMD won't be making new RNDA for high-end Radeon gaming GPUs for enthusiasts, but instead focusing on growing its cells and market share. AMD actually made this announcement at the IFA 2024 Tech showcase in berlin berlin or the ifa tech conference um i i know from experience that the amd radeon 5700 xt and 6700 xt are some of their best-selling gpus and they are mid-range as well as the amd radeon 5600 and 6600 xts i've actually got both of these cards um in my uh, collection in two of my gaming rigs and they they perform uh, wonderfully for especially for uh, 1080p gaming and uh higher as well and amd actually hasn't been able to compete with nvidia gpu technology on the high end like with ray tracing performance and fsr upscaling technology that we talk about here all the time here on this network <laughs> But, you know, don't fret. AMD will probably produce high-end GPUs once again. They are just in the middle of a GPU reorg, as I like to look at it. And I personally absolutely love my high-end AMD Radeon RX 6950 GPU for gaming. And actually will wait patiently for the next few generations of AMD GPUs to replace it. So I'm going to be patient and hang in there until I do an upgrade for one of their high-end cards. And I, I have to. I have no choice <laughs> unless I want to go to the 7000 series. <laughs> Pretty wild. Yeah. So, you know, you know, Jack, he's a senior VP over at AMD. You know, he, he kind of got boxed in with us. And, you know, it's good for AMD to come out and say, hey, you know what? Here's what we want to do. We want to hit 40% market mm-hmm. saturation, which is yeah. what's AMD at right now? Like ballpark, like 12? 12. 12. Yeah. Like, tiny. You know, it's we're in our little bubble, and everybody like get AMD here. Like AMD is great, which is fun, but they want to hit forty, and they know they can't do that by selling. You know, the next generation super high end. They're like, let's just get that big squishy middle, which has been completely neglected mm-hmm. for the past couple of years. Yeah, AMD's not paid any attention. Like AMD hasn't done us any favors either. You know, they're slightly less expensive than. Your NVIDIA cards right now. N- nobody has like a great value card out. We haven't seen a great value card in years. Yeah. You know, what are you looking at? Well, this all kind of hinges on what Intel does. I think this is a good plan for AMD. It is, you know, make it up in volume because that's what most of us want. We want something in that three, I don't even want to say five, but, you know, Brave New World, right? Three to $500 yeah. range. <laughs> 35 that can really smash some pixels has a decent amount of ram on it and uh, is readily available if they could deliver that that's a good move that's a really good strategy but there might be a problem with this there might be a serious problem with this because this all hinges on what amd does when and if i gotta say if intel manages to ship battle mage because i Battle Mage, I don't think Intel's swinging for the fences on this. Mm -hmm. And Intel might just have that opportunity. Intel needs something on the books for Intel to walk in and undercut AMD in the mid-range. Because Intel is not above selling a product at cost to crush 
a competition, you know, and like this is a completely yeah. different game than if they're going back and forth in AMD and Intel's done AMD dirty in the past. They'll do it again if they can. And that puts you in a weird spot, though, because you want that in competition. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm personally OK with. NVIDIA having the how long has the 4090 been on the market? Nothing has touched the 4090 in what, four years? Yeah, four years at least. It's yeah. just, just like sitting there. We're just waiting for, <laughs> like, who are we waiting on to make something faster than the 4090? NVIDIA. That's it. No one's like, I wonder if uh, AMD, could AMD make something faster than the 4090 now? Hopefully they could. Is it worth doing the R&D and everything? Like, hmm, not really. So, yeah, it does hinge on how Battle Mage plays out. You know, I want to live in that situation where, uh, AMD and Intel have to fight for that mid-range where I'm sitting there going, ooh, what's the better value card? And, you know, if you were waiting for that, yeah. you know, 4090 killer from AMD, hold out. Maybe you'll see something else, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Personally, I'm just waiting on something <laughs> that is as fast as the 4090. You know, you're just waiting on that technology and it's like 400 bucks, you know, patience. Mm-hmm. Patience. <laughs> if you can wait long enough, you know, the technology gets cheaper despite what some delusional people think. Um, is, you know, we, I got like a 30 series card and like, I think the next card that I'm going to buy is going to be like an A4000, which those are actually yeah, not yeah. too bad used. You can get one for like 700 bucks, but pretty trash at gaming. So most people wouldn't be terribly interested in them, but you could mm-hmm. run some AI on them. And that's what you can do with this next bit. Raspberry yeah. Pi friend, a buddy. It's like <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin but made out of yeah. raspberry pies and he doesn't have a cassette tape. Yes. <laughs> Build your own AI friend. This dude has made his own little personal AI assistant using a raspberry Pi 4B open source software and a secure VPN connection. It's using Vosk, Olama, and just a raspberry Pi sandwich. Now this is something that you can use like legitimately to schedule appointments, set reminders, control smart devices in your house. And you can play around with a bunch of different language models and kind of mix and match and train it. So if you want to get your pinky toes wet with this thing, mm-hmm. like how do the AI is sit? And I love projects like this because you're like, wait, what? Yeah. I can make my own and <laughs> it kind of does stuff. That's the big sell. So it works. It legitimately can function as an AI assistant and it's easy enough to interface with as, you know, a novice can come in somebody like me who's not really versed in this stuff and like, hey, I could start playing around. Oh, I can make my own little um little bit. And of course, there'll be a link to the Hackster IO page with everything that you need to play around with it. And I, I think this is like super interesting, super fascinating. Uh, you know, anything would be better than, you know, your Amazon Echo or, you know, your Google Voice, you know, AI assistants or like whatever. And I know people are always interested in rolling their own, and this is yeah. relatively inexpensive to make. You know, the most expensive source. thing in here is going to be like, you know, if you already got a 3D printer, you get a, get a Pi 4 laying around, basically you're good to go toss a screen on it. Jill, you're a fan of the uh, screen yeah. with the eyeballs, right? <laughs> it was so cute. So when, uh, you know, before you ask it a question, its eyes are closed, and when it's as it's waiting for the question and then when you ask a question its eyes open um answering and processing the questions and it, it's just they're really cute hand-drawn uh, uh faces that adam the devel- developer created <laughs> it's so cute <laughs> it, it it gives a human ev- element to the the little robot <laughs> the oh. little pie assistant <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put a face on it and people want to start interacting with it, right? Yeah, exactly. It just looks so friendly. Somebody's and, got a problem with a piece of hardware, yeah. put some googly eyes on it, and they're like, oh, it's cute now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, open source solutions, exactly where they make sense, you know? Yeah, where, where we can. Yeah. Um, don't volunteer your information unless you have to, and even then, think about it twice. That's going to do it. Before we get out of here, I want to thank not one, but two new patrons Yay. that have joined the Linux Gamecast Patreon. Yeah, weekly, daily, while you're under, because like Linux Gamecast was the first thing I started, and I can barely manage two Patreons, and I'm not going to set up a third. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but everything goes in the one pot. It's good. Uh, I want to thank not Jordan that you know from Linux yeah. Gamecast, another Jordan 
has joined. Hello, other Jordan. Or Jordan 2. You have to let me know which one you prefer to be yeah, referred and to. He and a P1 kicks down the door. A name that was <laughs> so long it wouldn't fit in the little notification thing down there. Yeah. We were uh, having jokes about it on Saturday because uh, I had to shorten it just to get chat in. And at the end of the show, I had I enlogged it. And it was still too long to read out the full thing. But yes, a penguin kicks down the door. As a patron, you get a bunch of perks, a bunch of bonus things. We give the show away for free. You know, I don't put ads on it. There's no ads in the podcast version. There's probably ads on the YouTube version, but you're running an ad blocker anyway, so don't blow me up about that. But I also put a completely ad-free downloadable video version up for patrons. You get the live and uncut. You're listening to this show and you're like 15, maybe 20 minutes, you know, try to make it nice and short and tight. But we're usually here for an hour every Wednesday. Come and listen live, mm-hmm. completely free, no charge. But if you are a patron, you get that in podcast format so you can put it in your rss feed listen to it when you want to along with the live video access to our discord track mania server bunch of other things pre pre super shows and on saturday if you want to find out a little bit behind the scenes production meeting what we got going on there we do appreciate your support keeping us loud live and independent head over to linuxgamecast.com we got a support tab all the different ways that you can be like hey man i'd like to help you out and what you got going on also if you got questions about your Linux problems and you want real answers, hit me up in the forums over on Interfacing Linux. I'm there. I got you covered. Don't worry about it. Talk about no tracking. Talk about no ads. I actively even fight AI scrapers, man. You would be amazed. I have an entire rule just for Singapore to block TikTok. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's brutal. They're trying to, hmm. Anyway, time for some credits. Yeah. Oh, and it looks like uh, Jordan, he donated one dollar, not a hundred. I thought it said a hundred. <laughs> you can donate a hundred. Go ahead. I yeah. will stop you. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you, Jordan. You're one of our, our prestigious patrons now. And we have many in our audience, including all the names that are scrolling by really fast right now. Um, like... Kim, Leonardo, Martin, Craig, Nick, Colin, Door to Door Geek, Mr. Alert. <laughs> and, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, of others beautiful <laughs> party people. Thanks for showing up. And yeah, yeah, like Oil of Hope said, all good now that we had a like weirdness with the RSS feeds. What did I do? I flipped things around and I juggled stuff digitally. Oh, okay. Then I'm like, does it work now? It's like, oh, it works now. Cool. All right. Then I like shut that door and I was like, I'll open that door next time someone has a problem with it. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great rest of your week, everybody. Bye, See you everyone. next time. <laughs>